shocked as everybody else in this community. Salam is an icon around the campus. Flowers now lie next to his Heisman Trophy. Long Sad time. story about Rashawn Salam. Former Heisman Trophy winner, running back at Colorado, taking his life. Found dead in a park in Boulder. Salam, the only player ever to have won a Heisman at the University of Colorado. Rashan Iman Salam, born October 8, 1974, died December 5, 2016. One of the greatest things about sports is it gives hope. Hope to whoever, no matter your size, color, race, or background. Once you're committed to putting in the time and effort, you can always find a sport to play, enjoy, and excel in. It unites people from all over the world and over time has even become generationally lucrative. There's much good in sports, just like there's a side that can cause an athlete to focus too much on being great that they neglect the importance of building themselves for a life after football in a well-rounded personality and education. Pressure to stay on top and always outdo your last achievement or in today's case, not be known socially as an athlete that never lived up to their potential. Rashan Salam's story is one that perfectly describes those negative pressures a game can have on one's life, also the loneliness you as an athlete need to be ready for the higher you excel. To whom God has given the most, it has to be guarded. At the level Rashan reached as a football god in Colorado, Rushing for over 2,000 yards for only the fourth time in the NCAA and becoming the only Heisman Trophy winner in school's history, then being drafted in the first round of the NFL Draft and becoming the youngest ever NFL running back to rush for 1,000 yards, has to put you in a space your trust circle dwindles every step of the way. Because now everyone wants a piece of you and not many you can trust even with your thoughts. Then hitting a wall in the NFL where you're not living up to expectations while fighting off an addiction, injuries, and a life you don't know how to navigate when there's finally no one around to do that for you. I recently heard Gilbert Arenas make a great point about Ben Gordon having more and more instances of bipolar episodes and becoming harmful to others or acting unfit in society because he no longer has that professional structure around him to make sure he stays on course and has people that relate around to talk to. Now it's just up to him to do all that for himself. It's a point I champion because most athletes you see that excel in their sport have neglected so much as far as other human development, specifically socially, because they've spent so much time developing their craft. The pressure of being great can push you right off the rails, as much can be said about Rashan Salam's life story. What happened to Rashan Salam? Rest in peace. Salute to 1YFOAT for this request. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Supposed to be around universities and be an ambassador and so forth, and that doesn't necessarily feel like your personality. Born in San Diego, California, Salam was quickly introduced to football by his father that played running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. At La Jolla Country Day, Salam was an instant top athlete that led his team in rushing every game he played and averaged over 100 yards a game. He was an All-American, school's all-time leading rusher, and eventually inducted into the school's Hall of Fame. He chose Colorado and by his junior year, he had became the primary ball carrier and rushed for 2,055 yards, averaging 7 yards a carry and 24 touchdowns. He won the Heisman and the Walter Payton Award for Best Running Back in 94, was the Sporting News Player of the Year and led his team to an 11-1 record while adding a 1995 Fiesta Bowl win. His name rang heavy in college football, expected to be a lock first round pick, which he was 21st overall that year by the Chicago Bears. Stunt number one, marijuana use and injuries. During his rookie year with the Bears, Rashan did show glimpses of what he did at Colorado. He rushed for over a thousand yards as a rookie and scored 10 touchdowns, but he had major issues with holding on to the ball, 
which followed him his entire career, losing 14 fumbles in 31 games. According to his own words, the reason he attributes to his marijuana use. He said for him, smoking weed did nothing but make him a much more recluse and non-social person who all he wanted to do was be alone, smoke weed and do what he wanted. In his mind, it made him much more lackadaisical than he was at Colorado when he broke and set all those records. He was fumbling unconsciously and knew what the problem was, he just couldn't stop. His second year in the league was much less productive as he rushed for half the yards he did as a rookie, three touchdowns and three more fumbles, although he did catch the ball well at 87%. In 97, year 3, he broke his leg in the third game of the season, a game where he had a couple costly fumbles. During the downtime rehabbing his injury and not attending practice, he says he just stayed home and smoked weed all day and did nothing. It's not that marijuana was bad necessarily, but too much of anything can hurt you, and too much weed made Salam increasingly lazy. Without being able to stay in shape, he lost himself to the injury and of course, getting high. He would inform the Bears of his addiction early 1998 and they traded him before the beginning of the season. Stunt number two, out of football. The heavy marijuana use after being injured continued. This time, it had Salam overthinking a lot of situations, especially the ones where he didn't perform like expected. When the Bears traded him to the Miami Dolphins in 98, the trade was accepted, then undone because Salam failed the physical held by his potentially new Dolphin team. The Bears cut him and he missed the entire 98 season. Being out of football, Rashan says was embarrassing and he usually overthink what it meant to be a 23-year-old former Heisman winner and be out of the league. The Oakland Raiders invited him to training camp and raved about the belief they still had in him and how much they believed marijuana abuse was behind him and he was ready to be productive in the NFL. But before the 99 season, they too cut Salam, but not for weed, simply because his production wasn't as good as others on the depth chart, specifically Tyrone Wheatley, former giant who wound up having a breakout thousand yard season. The Cleveland Browns picked him up and he only played two games for them with one rushing attempt for two yards. Just like that, he was out of football again. Something he said he never wanted to re-experience, being without a team. To me, that speaks volumes because here's a guy that knows he needs to be around that professional structure, not to play well, but to keep him mentally in a controlled environment. Him being out of football at just 25 drove him into depression and being much too hard on himself. When you are the Heisman Trophy winner, you're put on a pedestal and sometimes that pedestal is not comfortable. Stunt number three, the pressure. Mental health and stability in sports truly isn't focused on enough. Not just commercial ads that depress you even more, but really making it a thing to go to therapy and regular attended checkups. Without the mind, who knows where the talent is leaded? Salam was an extraordinary talent, but leaving school, I think there was just too much pressure on him, and it may have just been self-inflicted. Rashan wasn't a player for Colorado that was breaking records since a freshman and had all this time to develop mentally. He was mediocre until his breakout junior year and all of a sudden he's winning a Heisman Trophy and celebrated as the biggest story in college sports. Then to be drafted in the first round, along with the paranoia effect of THC, all made Salam second guess himself and not in the right mind to focus on holding on to the ball. The more he performed poorly, the more he felt the pressure to not end up a bum that never lived up to the hype. He wouldn't play another game after 99 and from there lost a lot of money investing in friends and scattering business associates. He was now broke with $400 left to his name and the landlord hounding him for rent. That same day, December 5th, 2016, he was found dead, shot in the head with his own 357 Magnum. Notes near him were left to suggest it was self-inflicted and the coroner ruled as such. 
gone at just 42 years old, disappointed how his life played out after all he did. All in all, you just never know. People put on these masks every day because they're embarrassed with not meeting social expectations. Some people do well in that pressure and some crack and feel death is the only way out. Taking your own life is never the only way out. There's so much more you have to give and there's so much people still here that are counting on you, have respect for you and what you did as a player and in life. So taking your own life only disappoints them in the long run. If you're having trouble with this, I'm sure there's numbers you can call. But the one thing I want you to make sure you do, man, is give it one more day. Just remind yourself every time you have those thoughts, give it one more day and see what happens. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out. What I'll always remember about the guy, it was all about team. It was all about family. He was, he was a, a great young man. 